When I was young, Aunt Donna was always there for me. My parents were never around. They were always working hard. They never gave me attention like Aunt Donna did. She was the one who cared for me, and who I could go to for help whenever I needed it. She was so sweet, always bringing me snacks while she watched over me. Had a wide, bright smile, short blonde hair. Oh, she was a beautiful middle-aged woman, but she never married. I, I was the closest she had to a son. My parents left for work before Aunt Donna came to my Riverside house in Windsor, Ontario. Aunt Donna was never late, so I worried. I stayed sitting on the stairs, waited for 20 minutes at least, and to a kid, that feels like forever. She came in, smiling brightly. Hello there, Jonathan. She sounded so happy as her bags banged against the door frame. She had a lot of bags this time. I asked her what was in them. Presents, she smiled, put on a red hat with a white furry tassel. It's early Christmas today. She beckoned me to follow her to the living room. I sat on the couch, and she sat on the other. She pulled many colorful gifts from her bags. This one's for you. She passed me a gift, placed one on the couch beside her. And this one's for Bradley. Okay. Well, at the time I didn't find that strange or anything. Aunt Donna was always an oddball. I opened the box, found a watch inside. It had rockets on the face with the miniature clock on it, planets. It ticked away and I put it on. I thanked her as any kid would, skipped away while her friend, quote unquote, opened the gift it was given to. Later that night, I went out of my room to find out what Aunt Donna had been doing. And there were gifts everywhere. I just asked her what was for dinner. It was spaghetti. Pasta was okay, a little simple, though. She told me to run off and play, and that's what I did. Now, when we got around to the pasta, I'd, I'd say the pasta tastes a little interesting compared to some of the other ones I've had. When I rode a bike around my house, I stopped. A present was in front of me. I continued, and two presents were blocking me. As I went onwards, the number just increased until there was a wall in front of my bike. I thought of it as a challenge. I zoomed into the wall of empty boxes, and <laughs> they exploded, crashed into the ground with my force. I grinned proudly as I just biked away. Oh, man, but, but when I grew older, I, I, I started to really notice these things, you know? Aunt Donna became older, but she stayed happy as ever, kept contact with her invisible friends. Now, on an early Christmas... <laughs> She passed me a gift box. Inside was the same watch I got every day she decided that it was Christmas. I put it on, smiled, thanked her for the gift as a form of kindness. But, uh... But I, I decided enough was enough. I, I asked her why she gave gifts to her invisible friends if they never opened them. I gotta tell you, that was the first time I'd ever seen her somewhat angry. The children are here! Don't call them invisible! She defended them against me. Oh, I thought you had learned better than to offend them. She started muttering things that just didn't make sense. Well, a few days later, as I said, I, I, I was tired of this. I confronted her again. Uh, I told her that I believe she might need to see a psychiatrist. And you know, her reaction was the same. She was in denial. Three more days passed, and I told her I, I didn't want her to come, come see me anymore. I was old enough to take care of myself now with all the things she taught me. She shook her head, smiled. Jonathan, you can never leave me. She passed me another gift. She whispered, skipped away. Oh, the large box was colorfully wrapped, intriguing. I opened it, and it was empty. A few more days later, a young boy was at my house, and I didn't recognize him. I poked him in an effort to, to get to know him, but he just ignored me. Aunt Donna came over. Here, Freddy, here's your gift. 
It was the same gold watch with little rackets, planets on the face that she'd given me all those early Christmases before. She passed an empty box over to me, placed it on my lap. And this one is for you, Jonathan. She placed another on the other boy's lap next to her. And this one is for Bradley. <laughs> she laughed cheerfully.